Hi everyone. Today I'm painting the Mississippi River. I rarely paint landscapes, so this will be a challenge for me. Before I began painting here, I spent about 15 minutes applying masking fluid to the white clouds and every golden highlight in the dark clouds. I also masked off the sun. And now I'm painting the blue part of the sky with some cerulean and cobalt blue. I wet the paper down first and dropped the colors on, and then I did a second layer after it dried. The masking fluid preserves the white of the paper. Next, I'm using cadmium yellow light and cadmium yellow medium to paint the brightest part of the sunset. The sun is a white blur on the left side of the paper. Above that is a narrow transitional area between the yellow and blue. I'm letting those colors mingle together with bits of orange and purple. Next, I'll work on the large shadowy clouds that dominate the scene. I'm using mostly purple and a deep navy blue along with some raw sienna and even a little cadmium red light to keep them from looking too cold. I'll deal with the highlights later. Finally, I'll lay in the sky reflected in the river. I think you can see the little railroad bridge way off in the distance. I'm using similar colors to the ones in the sky, but they're not quite as bright. I've also added a small cloud just above the sun with a warm purple and a streak of orange, and I'll switch brushes. My larger brush was a number six round, and the one I've got now is a number one. I painted a few skinny clouds near the horizon with golds that blend to a cooler purplish gray. A lot of these clouds in the lower half of the picture have yellow-orange undersides, so I'm painting that where I see it. I'm looking at my reference photo carefully. While I'm not going to be able to duplicate it perfectly, and that kind of bugs me, I'm reminding myself that what I'm dealing with here are clouds and maybe I should relax for a change. Along the horizon is a narrow line of hills way off in the distance and a few bits of orange and yellow near the sun. Then using a dark mixture of purple and sepia, which is a dark brown, I'm going to establish the banks on each side of the river. Doing this gives the painting some structure and I feel better about what I've got going on here. I'm also painting some dark reflections in the water and leaving little gaps between those lines. I'll work on the right side of the river this way too, and before I quit for the day, I'll go over the dark part of the left side one more time. So it's the next day of painting, and the first thing I'm going to do is remove the masking fluid. As you can see, I've used a lot of it, and it's left everything it covered nice and white. First, I want to tackle the bright yellow area near the sun. I left it alone yesterday so I could do this today, and no other colors would corrupt that pure yellow. Then I'll add some orange and golden areas to that cloud that's above the sun. The next part will look odd, but I've mixed some cadmium yellow medium with some hot pink to create a golden yellow highlight for parts of the dark clouds. This will go where the masking fluid was. I couldn't think of a good way to do this without masking fluid. The gold is so different from the purples and grays here, and had I added the gold to that paint while it was wet yesterday, they would have blended together and I'd have lost that beautiful gold. I've still got a lot more to do here. Now it's time to soften those clouds in the blue part of the sky. I'm rubbing a bit of damp paper towel along the hard edges the masking fluid left behind, and this makes the clouds a lot softer while parts of them stay white. It always amazes me how much watercolors change as they dry. These big clouds seemed a lot darker when I painted them the first time, but now I can see that they need darker shadows, which are mostly purple, dark blue, and sepia, and I'll concentrate that darkness along the undersides of the clouds for the most part. I'm painting with my number six round brush that has fuzzy, destroyed bristles. I use this brush to add textures to lots of different things, and to create realistic cloud textures, I'm swirling and dabbing the paint on with it. Now I'm going to be all about adding more textures and details to the clouds, and I've sped up the video a bit here because this is just me being fiddly. I took the reference photo for this painting last fall. Jeff and I were driving across the bridge at Quincy, Illinois, and the sky looked just epic to me, so I took a bunch of photos as we crossed the bridge. I always like it when the sky has a combination of high and low clouds, and that gold color along the dark clouds was just so pretty. 
we were in the right place at the right time, and a few minutes later all that color was gone. Next you'll see me add more dark areas, including some tiny dark cloud bits. I'll also intensify those golden highlights with another layer of that yellow and pink mixture. And I'll try to integrate the big clouds with the smaller clouds below them. Before I started painting this, I looked at my reference photo for a very long time and came up with my game plan. I think that's really crucial when you're painting something complicated relatively quickly. I had to break the painting down into sections that seemed logical, and I think the masking fluid step was worth the time and it made a big difference here. I'm sure other painters would have come up with a different plan for this picture, but I'm happy with the way mine worked out. I paint realistic portraits and still lifes and concentrate on the tiniest details, so when I'm confronted with a landscape, I can become overwhelmed in a hurry. So this summer I've been trying to relax and trust my instincts with this kind of painting. It's probably never going to be my favorite thing to paint, but I want to become more comfortable painting landscapes. I grew up near the Mississippi River, and I'm glad to be living near it again. When I was a kid, I just assumed all rivers were this size, and I'm afraid it spoiled me for all other rivers. Scenes like this make living in the middle of nowhere totally worth it. Thanks a lot for watching me paint.